This is the second part of the SPSS introduction. My name is Brandy Weiss. Now that we already have data entered into SPSS, we're going to look at the different views available for entering information about this data. Now everything we've looked at up until this point has been considered part of the data view. We'll also be looking at a variable view now. So here's our data view, and this is the tomato.sav file that comes with SPSS. And if we look at the lower left-hand corner, we can see that this is called our data view here. Now let's, if we look in the data view, something to note is that each of these columns is representing an individual variable. So we have three variables in this data file. And here, each row is representing an individual case or an individual person, or in this case, an individual tomato. Now let's click on the Variable View tab, and we get something that looks like this, which is a little bit different than what we saw before. And here, each of these rows is now representing an individual variable. So we had three variables. Now we have three rows representing each of those variables. And here I've put the data view in the bottom left-hand corner so you can see what the data view looks like. So let's go through each of these columns in the variable view. The first column is called name, and the name of each of these variables is going to correspond with the name that's in the data view. So first, in the first cell, first row, first column in the variable view, that corresponds with the variable name FERT that's the top of the first column in our data view, similar with height and initial. In our next column, we see something called type, and everything entered here is considered numeric, and that's because if we look in our data view, everything is numbers. If we had words that were actually written, then you would see the word string appear, appear instead of numeric. If we look at decimals, everything that's listed here has zero decimal places, which makes sense when we look at the data view. If we wanted to, let's say, we'll look in this first column, let's say we want to increase the number of decimal places to one. When we change that in the variable view to one, it also changes in our data view. So we see a single decimal place after, after each of the decimals. Label is another nice column to have. A lot of times when we use that name column to specify the name of our variable, we use pretty short names. In earlier versions of SPSS, this was limited to eight characters. Here we may want to use a name that's a little bit longer to refer to our variable. So here, FERT is really called fertilizer, and height is final height, and initial is initial height. These names would be, once we start doing analysis, these label names, that's what's actually going to be used in the output that we get from each of the analyses. In the values, we don't have any values that are listed here. But if you click on the little ellipse next to the word none in one of these, you'll get a pop-up box that looks like this. And actually, it'll be blank when you first see it. What I've done is I've specified that the number 1 in the value, when I see a number 1, I want that to represent type 1. Here, when I put the value number 2 in the value box, I want the label to be type 2, and then I'll click Add. And so after you do that, and you would do that for each of your variable labels, you'd click OK. Now let's look at this data view down here. We have numbers 1, 2, and 3. Now once we click OK, these have now been replaced with the words type 1, type 2, because those are the labels we entered. We can do something kind of similar for missing cases also. Right now, we don't have any missing cases in our data file. But let's say that we wanted to say anytime I see the number of z the value of 0 or 9 for a particular variable, I want you to say that that value is missing, so it's not actually there. We can enter that. Um, and then you would click OK. We don't have missing data right now, so I'm just going to leave it as it is. And the other part that's important that you may want to pay attention to is the measurement scale that each of these variables is measured on. So here by default, it's put all of these in scale. But let's say you had a variable such as gender. You may want to change that to nominal instead of scale. 
And the type of measurement scale that you've listed over here dictates the type of analyses that you can conduct. So be sure you've said that, stated that these are the correct type of measurement scales. Okay, now that we have data in SPSS and we've correctly specified all of the information about our variables that we need to run analyses, let's go ahead and run an analysis and look at the output that we get. Now when SPSS runs analyses, it's going to open up a separate window that's called the SPSS output window. This is when we run any kind of analysis or we create any kind of graph, it's going to show up in this output window. So here is our tomato.save data file. And I'm just going to run a simple frequencies analysis. So this is really basic. And to do this, you're going to go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and select Frequencies. Once you do that, you'll get a pop-up box that looks like this. I'm going to run frequency analysis on the initial height variable. So what I'm going to do is select this initial height variable from the left hand column that contains all of our variables. I'm going to select that and then on this arrow in the middle I'm going to click on that and once I do you can see it moves over to that variables box. One more time because this is similar with any other analysis that you're going to run. You select your variable, click on the arrow in the middle, it moves over to the variables box. Uh, after this, I can click on OK and you get your SPSS output window that shows up here and here's all our output. We had seven tomatoes in this data file so you can see under statistics the valid number in the sample size represented by N is seven. And then the bot at the bottom, you can see the table here. It's titled Initial Height. And it has the frequency of times that each of these initial heights appeared in the data set. Something that you may want to do if you're running this analysis on a computer that is not yours and you don't have SPSS on your computer, you may want to copy all of the output and paste it into a Microsoft Word file so that you can open it later. Because if you don't have SPSS, you can't open this output file later. Also, if you're turning in some kind of assignment or you need the output into in the middle of a separate file, you may want to be copying this and pasting it into another program. To do this, you're going to right click on the piece of information that you want or you could select all of it and copy it. So we're going to do this on the initial height frequencies table. I right click and select copy objects. Open up Microsoft Word and you can use control V to paste it or you could just right click and go to paste. Once you do that you can see that your output actually shows up in your Microsoft Word document and you can put this wherever you'd like it. One last thing that you may want to do is save your data file and to do this you could go to or your output file you can go to file save as and you'd and save it the same way you would any other file in any other program. There are three types of SPSS files and you can save and create all of these. The first one will be the data file that you've seen. The second would be the output file. And the third would be a syntax file that we didn't get into in this introduction, uh, but maybe something that's useful if you want to learn about it on your own. Okay, that's.